Hello, people of the internet. Um, this is going to be the first video in a series that uh, I'm going to title Real World Networking. Um, I asked around on the uh, networking subreddit uh, what what users would like to see kind of as uh, video tutorials and content. And it seemed that there was, uh, there was a lot of oversaturation in videos that dealt with um, the certification prep type content so I may double back and hit some of that at a, at a later point but for now I thought that maybe some some short uh, um, short videos on kind of what you would see on a day-to-day -day basis as a network admin or a network engineer might be kind of interesting for people to see and a little different than what you usually find out there so I'm gonna start out at kind of a, a low level and this is a pretty simple one um, but it is one that I see a lot I've seen a lot throughout my career it's something you, you have to troubleshoot a lot so um, I'll get into the ticket in just a moment um, I'm using just as a prelude I'm using Cisco Packet Tracer for at least for now for this ticket currently um, there's some issues with it obviously as you know it's a simulator so there's commands that they don't support commands that unfortunately I would use so I'm gonna cover them as I go along things that will kind of help you um, solve these problems more efficiently than what I'm gonna be able to do but there's there are alternate commands that we're gonna end up using that will help us it's just it's not it's not exactly what you would do. GNS3, the early release beta, does support switching, um, but it's a little complex, so I'm still working on getting that up and running. Um, and uh, so let's get started. Let's take a look at the ticket we got. Um, I'm also going to, I intend to get up uh, some sort of a web-based ticketing system to make it more real world as well. As you can see right now, I just have a Microsoft Word document that I typed one up into, but it gets the same idea, uh, the same job done here. Um, every ticketing system I've used essentially you, you know who the user is how to contact them what the problem is um, and the issue with with what the problem is is typically there's not that much information to help you out uh, I typed up a decent amount in this one but um, um, let's just move forward and, and you'll kind of see how this works out so uh, submitted this morning at 08 by John Doe John Doe is always pushing us tickets you're always going to have that couple of users that are, are sending tickets your way every minute and i'm not sure if it's just their way of getting out of doing their actual work that's honestly my personal thought on how that goes um but uh, i won't speculate so um this one was put in by the help desk you'll see um depending on your ticketing system sometimes help desk people will uh, push tickets over to you and sometimes you'll get some from the end user Preferably you get them from the, the help desk and uh, hopefully they are going to kind of um, gather some information from the user before it gets sent to you. So this ticket goes that uh, that uh, Mr. Doe called to report he has no connectivity to his workstation. He stated that he hooked up his laptop to his cable and when it didn't work, plugged the cable back into his desktop. Uh, help desk had him do an IP config and tell them his IP address and it showed a 10150 IP address. Uh, they could not remote into it and they have not dispatched a technician pushing ticket to the network team so in this case that's uh, that's the right thing to do I, I see a lot of times in IT that different sections will push tickets around if they're not exactly sure uh, who the culprit is for why there's an issue but this is pretty straightforward end users workstation not getting connectivity so it's gonna come to network so that's good to go um, only bit of information we really care about honestly is the IP address that's the only thing and the fact that you know what he did so that tells us in this environment we're running uh, port security port security is a layer 2 security capable of shutting down a port um, there's also two two other uh, uh, kind of um, what do they call that violation um, actions it can take uh, which is protect and restrict and they have different um, they have different purposes to them but by default you will uh, port security does use the shutdown method and that's going to shut a port down until it's manually brought back up so that's a good way if you have um, you know you want to limit the amount of mac addresses coming in so you're not vulnerable to any sort of mac flooding attack that would kind of overflow your cam table of your devices um, so let's uh, let's jump over into the topology here you'll see that I threw this together um, it, it took a lot longer than I had wanted and it's like I said before by the time I got done and realized some of the commands weren't being uh, uh, recognized by packet tracer um, I was too deep into the rabbit hole so 
we are going to run with it for this ticket and i'm going to try and make some changes by the time i do the next one i'm going to do these tickets about once a week uh, maybe two times a week and uh, i'm hoping to take some user feedback on what you'd like to see uh, i've al already heard uh an, an, an vpn tunnel uh, that's a good one i'd like to do that one and we may actually do that with real world equipment another user on uh, reddit actually has a uh, um, I believe he said some sort of 2800 series router or something he might put on his edge and open up so that we can uh, we can throw some uh, some isocamp and IPsec back and forth, get a tunnel up and run and check that out for you. So anyway, let's get back, stay on track here. Um, let's uh, let's try and call Mr. Doe at 5001. That's what I'd probably do first in a real world environment. Just see if I can get any additional info on where he's located in the infrastructure because we have a couple of different switches. A um, couple different buildings in this network, so. Okay. Uh, well, I'd hate to say that that hasn't happened to me before, but there's a lot of times where their information just is not up to date. Uh, it could be that or potentially the, uh, the port that tripped. Maybe he had a voice VLAN and he had his phone and his computer trunk together. So... Uh, let's make this uh, let's make this as real world networking as possible. I'm gonna pause this video and go get a cup of coffee for a minute here. Uh, and I'm back, ready to get this day going. Caffeine is a, a networker's best friend, especially in the morning. I, I honestly think it's the only thing that'll uh, keep you alive throughout the day. Anyway, all right, so let's uh, let's tackle this. We're not gonna be able to get a hold of him. Calling the help desk isn't gonna do any good. They've already probably fielded 50 more tickets. They don't remember this one specifically. Um, let's take that IP address and see what we can do. Uh, let's start at our land core here. First thing I'm going to do is figure out where that IP address is, where that subnet is to try and hunt down kind of where this user is. Um, now, I did set this network up, okay, but in a real world environment where you have, uh, you know, VLANs in different locations, you have different subnets, different networks, maybe different off sites. Uh, the first thing that I'm going to do with an IP address, if I had a MAC address, I would handle it differently. Um, although with a MAC address, that's even more difficult. You almost need to know kind of the exact location of where they are to start getting into those local switches and looking in the MAC address table. Uh, if you get close enough, or sometimes from the you know from farther away, maybe at the core, if you do a show MAC address table and include their MAC address, the last four, it'll start showing you that it's con uh, it'll see the MAC address and it'll show you what port. A lot of times it might be a trunk port, which will tell you which device that it is actually on. So you start kind of working your way and walking through devices till you find the MAC address. But for now, all I have is an IP address, so I'm gonna do a show show IP route. 10.1.50. Whatever. Okay, and it is uh, that is a directly connected VLAN. It's a uh, it's a slash 24, so relatively small network here. I mean, I guess large in in retrospect, depending on what you're used to dealing with. But um, and it's directly connected to VLAN 50. So so we have that VLAN. Uh, if you look in uh, in your show IP in brief you can see <clears throat> VLAN 50 is here. So that tells me, looking at this topology, that we are kind of the uh, layer three uh, starting point for these these VLANs, these subnets, it appears, and then they head up and out from there. So that would, that would tell me that these are all trunks. So by knowing that, um, let's do a show int trunk. Perfect. VLAN 50 goes across every single one of these. So that does me no good. That doesn't help me at all. Um, because he could be at any one of these buildings based on that, uh, how that tr those trunks are set up. Oh, let me bring that back down where you can see it. So let's do this. Let's do uh, show IP ARP. Okay. Um, 10.1.50.3, uh, I just put that in the ticket. I, honestly, I don't believe that that's what, his, that's what his actual IP was before we tripped the port because technically right now we could probably ping that and it would go through. So let's just pretend it wasn't that address. But uh, with the show IP ARP, that's going to show us the 
all the different subnet breakdowns and then what they correlate what the ip addresses correlate to in the arp table to a mac address this is what we're going to use to really get down to the port level and try and turn his port back on um, and we can see it's in vlan 50. you can on real devices do a show ip arp include uh you know vlan 50 it is case sensitive or include you know 10.1.50 and then that's it and that, that'll show you just the results that you're looking to kind of um kind of narrow down uh not supported in packet tracer like i said there's a couple commands this is one of them i'm going to mention them to you this is how i personally would have would have handled this is trying to just initially start by looking just at that vlan because in a big network environment you're going to have a huge arp table and some of these switches so you're going to be wasting a lot of time looking through them and you're going to see that in just a second here because now we're going to uh, go into the mac address table now i would this is the same exact situation i would do a show mac address table include 5 alpha 6 3 for one example not supported unfortunately so I'm going to do a full show MAC address table this also is going to be a huge table so you're going to want to use includes as you're working your way through this so we went from IP address to MAC address um, with uh, one of these MAC addresses we're going to okay the other weird thing with packet tracer is and I guess this isn't really packet tracer this is just the networking devices acting how they're supposed to if the host devices aren't pinging things actively they'll fall out of the uh the arp cache table and these things are all kind of dead at the moment i may have to enable some sort of feature in packet tracer to actively uh uh fire off packets throughout the network and, and make it kind of simulate like it's active but um so this is not uh not exactly what we're going for either but that's okay um this shows one of the VLAN 50 MAC addresses being out at uh, FAST017. That's one of our trunk links. Um, I already personally know that's not the right one, and it looks like my devices that were, uh, well, you can see right here, that MAC address is uh, the interface MAC address of one of the switches because it's also uh, a VLAN 10 MAC address. I, I'm not sure if that's uh, SVI remnants or whatever. So um, we are going to, let me do this. Let me pause for a second and get a couple more entries in there and come back real quick. And we're back. We got more uh, more MAC addresses now on the table. You can see, um, like I said, because we're using trunks between there and 50 is allowed across all the trunks, um, that means that maybe 50 is a VLAN that can be used at any of these buildings from the core. He really could be at any of them. Okay, so like I said earlier, using his actual IP address and finding his actual MAC is going to be the best way to do this. But um, I can see at least three of these. We already determined one of those is a switch interface uh, MAC address based on the fact that it's it's pulling from these two right here. Or if you want to confirm it, you can go to that switch and look at that interface. But I did earlier because I saw that MAC. Um, these three right here are coming down fast, 0, 23. So if I do a uh, show run, Typically, I do an int fast 023. That's the fastest way to see just the config. Again, not supported. I'm going to probably figure out a way to switch over to GNS3 and use it completely. But fast 023, mm, trunk to VLAN or to, uh, to building 4. You could also do a show CDP neighbor and see what's coming down 023. It looks like the building 4 device. So let's jump over to building 4's device. This is another one where the command is not supported. The quickest way to do this, and you would find it almost immediately, is show int status. Okay, and they don't have that feature, which I really don't like because that's a there's a good amount of output in there that helps you. But one of the main things is it will show if it's connected, uh, not connect, or it will say error disabled if it's uh, in port security shutdown. So um, the other way we're going to be able to do it is show uh, port security, pretty much basic straight up command. And then you can see in the security violation count, um, they're all the default action is shut down. They're not currently all shut down. That's just what happens when they go down. This is kind of just an information overview. But you can see the violation count is one on fast zero three, and that's the only one that has a violation. So we are going to do show run int. No, nope, we can't do that. We're going to do show int f zero three. And you can see right here, line protocol is down, error disabled. Okay, so we're going to do a show run so you can see what the port security look setup looks like so access vlan 50 switch port mode access uh, these are just putting it as an access port and putting in the right vlan spanning tree port fast is so you don't wait forever with spanning tree um, i won't cover that in this video um, switch port port security that turns on port security 
switchboard port security mac address sticky what this command does is every time someone connects a device to the uh to that port it's going to sticky the mac address when, once it starts trying to send packets um uh, or anything request ip address anything like that this command right here is actually dynamically entered by the ios once it finds a mac address on that port this command will show up in the running config um, so once it stickies a Mac like this, if he plugs in another device, and by default, port security uses a maximum of one, right? Because you can set it. You can go in F03, um, switch port, port security maximum. And then you could set two MAC addresses, three. Two typically is what you're gonna see if you have a user and a voice VLAN. So that way you have one MAC address for each. Um, I've seen bugs where the phone boots up and starts trying to pull from the uh, user VLAN first. So sometimes you have to do three. Um, I believe there's some fixes for that though. You don't really want to do three because if it comes up correctly, then you have an extra MAC address that can be added to that port. Um, so right now we just have it set to one. We only have a user VLAN and we can see that MAC address right there. Now, the easiest way is we're just going to do a no MAC address sticky. paste that in there and now if you do a do show run and I do do because we're in um, config t uh, you can see that we removed that sticky mac right now just by removing the mac isn't going to do it if you do a show in f03 right now you'll see we're still error disabled okay and the reason for that is you have to manually shut and no shut the port so now that we're still in the port i'm going to do a shut no shut line protocol state change to up so now if we do a show, do show int F03, we'll see that we are connected. Um, another useful tip for troubleshooting port security, say it were to go down again right now and say error disabled, um, what you're gonna wanna do is use show log. Show log, which mine has absolutely nothing in it right now, terrible example, show log has um, it's imperative when you're trying to troubleshoot port security because it's going to log the MAC address that trips the port. Okay, so that's going to tell you why, to an extent, why it's being tripped. So if you see the MAC address and then you you do a, a show run include or rather begin include will tell you if it's there. Begin will show you where it's at. Um, begin and then the last four of the MAC, which we can't do here, but it will show you if it's already on another port. So if they move their machine to another port on the same switch, the switch already has their MAC address on a different port. It's gonna trip port security because of that. That same MAC is showing up on two ports. So that's another way the show log, if it keeps tripping, is gonna tell you why, because sometimes you'll remove a MAC and, and uh, reset the port and it's gonna shut down again on you and you're gonna be confused. So um, those are the two biggest things I see is uh, just a different device or the same device moving ports over. So that's pretty much it. We've resolved that ticket. Um, and so uh, Mr. Doe is good to go. We can put a comment in here and close it out. And, uh, and that's it. Um, I hope I covered a, a little bit of information, kind of a real world example of port security, even though a lot of the commands we couldn't use in Packet Tracer. I'm going to try and work to fix that uh, by either getting GNS3 up and running or figure something out. I might get some real world devices if I have to. I don't have too many floating around here right now other than some, some VoIP phones. So that's it. Uh, leave some comments. Let me know what you think. Let me know about future tickets you'd like to see. Uh, as I said before, we already are, are looking to hopefully do a VPN, site-to-site -site VPN, and uh, maybe, I don't know, easy VPN, some various different kind of uh, tunneling over the internet technologies that are useful. Um, and I've got a couple more ideas that I'm going to throw together in the videos, but we'll go with that. Let me know what you like, what you don't like, anything I can improve, and I'm going to try and keep moving forward with these with some, uh, some real-world uh, networking examples. So that was it. Take it one bad user. Thanks for watching.